Hi, I'm Pester, and this is Soso, and we are the, the High Flying Fools! Welcome back to This Tastes Funny, that show where we recreate historical dishes with funny names and present them to the queen. On this week's episode of This Tastes Funny, we're making Grab Lax. Now, this recipe originated in the 14th century in North Sweden. In the Middle Ages, salt was really expensive, so peasants had to use other methods to preserve their food, one of which was to take their fish and bury it near the coastline or in a bath of ocean water, using the salt from the ocean or from the earth to preserve their food. This method was called gravadlox, or translated cemetery salmon. Graveyard grouper. Oh, it's salmon. Uh, oh, zombie fish. No, it's uncooked, not undead. Oh. Now, once they had the salmon buried, they would bury it with birch wood, uh, the fish's own blood, and some herbs and spices to season it up. Now, we're going to use a little bit more modern approach. Now, they use a dill weed approach to actually cure the fish to achieve the same effect. And as always, we like to do a regular version and a gluten-free vegetarian version. So first, we're going to make some fake fish, or as I like to call it, the Salmon of Doubt. Your questionable fish or salmon of doubt, try one block of extra firm tofu drained and pressed, one cup vegetable broth, one sheet of nori torn into pieces, three tablespoons apple cider vinegar, one small raw beet, two tablespoons white miso paste, one teaspoon garlic powder, one teaspoon salt, and half a teaspoon of turmeric. So we have all of our ingredients here, um, both for our marinade and for our salmon of doubt. All right, so I'm just gonna mix all of our marinade ingredients in this. Ninja. And then we're gonna mix it on up. So our dry ingredients. Beets. Which are arguably dry. Nice and tight. You don't want it going everywhere. Get it in place. And then you figure out how it works. You push all of the buttons, things work better. Well, it looks all mixed up, or at least I'm all mixed up. And now I'm gonna set it aside for now. Turn off the power. And now we're gonna cut this to look like fish. Hmm. All right, so it says to cut it on a slight angle to give the flakiness of fish and that you can do like small ones and then wider ones because that's how fish flaky is. And we'll see how this goes. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Apparently that is the song of the Salmon of Doubt. Or doubtful salmon for copyright reasons. Alright. And now Pastor's kind of looked at an angle, so I'm gonna cut it like this just so it looks like a filet. I'm just gonna put this off to the side. Put it into our oh yeah, look at that, that's nice. Kind of flakes out. Ah, that's cool. Then we're gonna fill this and we're just gonna let it marinate. I closed it too tight for my own good. 
we shall see. It looks like a smoothie. <laughs> and lids on, lights out. All right, for your grab lax, you're gonna need one two pound salmon filet with the skin on, three tablespoons of salt, two tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of coarsely ground pepper, and one bunch of dill, coarsely chopped. So we have all of our dry ingredients here. We're gonna take all of them with the dill and put them in a bowl here. I mean, I'm no ninja, but I can blend. All right. And now once you've got your seasonings blended up there, you're going to take a piece of saran wrap here. That you can never find the edge of. So you're going to mess with it for probably like 20 minutes. But I got lucky. I think I found the edge here. That it is... Oh, I found part of the egg, but some of it seems to be wrapped back on. All right, so we're gonna lay down your saran wrap here. Give yourself a little extra over the edge there. All right, now you're gonna take about half of your blend and sprinkle it down in here. Even out the best you can. And then after you do that, that's when you want to put your dill down. That's a fun phrase to say, dill down. Apparently, this dill is not going up. <laughs> So, so I need some muscles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got it. Hey, so, so. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna put down my dill. You do not have to be sparing with this. You want to cover up that whole surface with it. Uh, if you have fresh, coarsely cut dill, that's better. We can check that a few grocery stores and we cannot find any. We're going with this. So then we're going to take skin side down onto our blend here. Alright. And then we're going to take the rest of our seasoning here. Sprinkle it over. There we go. Covering the entire surface. Of the moon, I mean of the fish. Maybe even out your surfaces here. Don't be afraid to play with your food. And then of course, more dill! Now what you're going to do is you're going to wrap up your saran wrap here over the fish. Finish the song! Do 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 Once you got your dill nice and tight like that, 
Then we're going to take it over to the plate that's going to be chilling in. Make sure your plate has some depth to it, so because there's going to be some liquid coming out of here. Um, speaking of liquid coming out, so-so, I need a knife. Thank you, so-so. Why did I let so-so have a knife? He, 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 he. Nice try, Pester. <laughs> so you're going to poke just a few holes in here. Now, make it so that the, uh, the juices have placed this cake. What? Don't cut towards yourself. <laughs> uh, there we go. And then after you do that, what you want to do is cover it with a pan and then put a weight on it. So I'm going to cover here with this pan lid. And then you want to make sure that you're evened out your weight as best you can. So we got a nice weight here. <laughs> then boom so you're gonna take this and you're gonna let it sit for about uh, 12 hours and then we're gonna flip it okay see when we're flipping then you take your pressed salmon you place it in the refrigerator and then we wait ah oh, now that's what I'm talking about yeah. no just no no I got more For your Gravlax sauce, you're going to need four egg yolks, one half teaspoon of salt, one half cup of vegetable oil or mild olive oil, one tablespoon of sugar, one tablespoon of white wine vinegar, one half teaspoon of white pepper, one tablespoon of mustard, and two to three tablespoons of finely chopped dill. Hi, we're back, and now we're going to make our Gravlax sauce. <laughs> For this, you're going to need four egg yolks. You're going to stir in your salt. Pour salt in here. Stir it up good. Yeah. Alright, now you're gonna try to get a, a thick consistency out of this. Yeah, After that, we're gonna slowly pour in our oil. Now whisk it pretty fast. I'm trying to look for the consistency of mayonnaise here. Yellow mayonnaise. Getting whiskey over here. This is whiskey business here. Mm -hmm. The yolk is ideally not on you. <laughs> but if you do it too quickly, the yolk will be on you. Yes. <laughs> Let us know what you think we're at mayonnaise. Mm. Yeah. Used a bit of a small bowl here. For yeah, sure. Yeah. I'm not sure an actual whisk will make the bowl any better, bigger. But we'll here. see. Let me whisk you away. Uh -huh. Better? Yeah. Weird. Apparently, if you use the correct tool for things, it's faster. <laughs> Who would have guessed? This weird thing. Yeah, whisk are weird. <laughs> this is one whisk I'm not gonna lick afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty nervous about what this is gonna taste like. We've gotten pretty lucky so far. Yeah, yeah, I'd say most of our uh, recipes so far haven't been too bad. This is a... This is the first one I think that really makes us nervous. <laughs> we'll see what the, uh, the Swedish and Nor Norwegian have to offer here. <laughs> Maybe we'll be like, no way, this is so good! <laughs> like Swede. <laughs> 
Actually, I, I don't eat mayonnaise. Yeah. So I don't know what we're looking for. I also do not eat mayonnaise. We're gonna so say that's mayonnaise then. I feel like. I thought it was thicker. Yeah, I thought mayonnaise was thicker, but I'm not sure. But also, we have other ingredients to add, so maybe it will get thicker. All right. So we're gonna put these next four ingredients all together uh, here, saving our dill for the end. All right. Here's our sugar. Sorry about that. <laughs> Some of it's stuck in there. That's just getting sweet on me <laughs> over here. Uh, it's our white wine and vinegar. Okay, so that does look pretty thick actually, yeah. Right. And we got our white pepper. Oh, it's changing color now. Oh, oh, oh. The white pepper turned it brown. It's being very mustardy. Speaking of mustardy, we're gonna add our mustard in now. All right. I'm not sure mustard does that. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that fork you were using? Thanks. Hey, I signed up to stir things. <laughs> no one said I was an expert holder. Think I am an acrobat. Hold that thought. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now we're gonna stir this all together here. Huh. Now, what's that? It actually looks pretty thick and yeah. So like I said, we're saving our dill to the end. You're not supposed to put your dill on until you're ready to serve. And since we are making two different dishes here, we're making our vegetarian and our traditional. We're gonna separate this into two different portions and then add our dill in just before we eat. We're going to bring our Gravlax up here from the fridge. It's been uh, being rotated for the last 72 hours. And this actually can hold in the refrigerator for about a week, but we're going to use it right away because the queen is hungry. The queen demands it. Yes. And she's really going to like this one, I'm Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. She's going to love it. I'm sure. All right. We'll see you guys in a bit. All right, now it is time to unwrap our salmon. It has been chilling in the refrigerator curing for the last 72 hours. We have rotated it every 12 hours, and now it is time for the unveiling. It's the most exciting unboxing day ever. Ooh, hey, Pastor, what'd you get? I got Gravlax. What'd you get? I also got Gravlax! Yeah. <laughs> All right, once we unwrap our Gravlax, we're going to scrape off our toppings. You can also rinse off your toppings as well. Whichever is easy for you, it, it doesn't affect the recipe either way. We're going to do a little bit of both. Okay. As you can see, there's our lovely Gravlax there. Let's see yours. All oh, right. Yeah. You got my skin on that side. So yeah, like we're just going to can scrape off what you can. If you're doing the vegetarian version, I'm going to suggest you skin uh, with the grain so that you don't tear it apart. Actually, it really kind of looks like salmon. I think it's a pretty, pretty similar colors. Yeah, I, I'm not going to lie. I was kind of nervous about the color based on the... <laughs> the marinade? Yeah, the marinade was really dark. Oh, there's a lot of there. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> I can see why they would want to rinse this. Yeah, I think I'm gonna start rinsing. That really does look like, you know, a nice filet of fish right there. I don't know what it tastes like, but it looks good. I will also go ahead and... Yeah, I'm kind of scraping in the water here a little bit, so I'm kind of comboing it up. And are we trying to get all of the beyond? Yeah, we're trying to get as much of the as much of the uh, seasoning off as possible before we start cutting it up. All right. So I am kind of nervous about putting this under here, but we'll see what it does. And I'm gonna take mine over to the chopping block. Nice. All right, I'm gonna go and take Mark to the chopping block. All right, guys, we'll see you over the chopping block. All right, we're here at our cutting blocks. Now, first thing you need to do is skin your fishes. I am not the greatest when it comes to skinning fish. 
So I'm gonna do my best, get in the comments, tell me how I'm screwing up. I think that it's going to be a lot easier for me because it was never actually attached, but I've also not tried it yet. So let's go ahead and see what skinning a knot fish is about. Yeah, so I seem to have done it. Good job. Thank you. I seem to have not done it still. All right, that is all right. Grab that. So now that we've got our fillets here, we're gonna cut about a 45 degree angle this way. Uh, real thin slices of what you want for this one. Okay, and I'm gonna take a slightly different approach for mine because I'd like to keep these nice uh, serrations that we've got here to make it look as fishy as possible. And I'm gonna cut at a 45 degree angle this way and see what happens. Looks like that dragon tail you had. Yeah, it looks like dragon tail. Maybe if the queen doesn't like zombie fish, we can give her dragon tails. Mm -hmm. I can't deny that she won't like this. What do you think? Should I cut it in half here? It looks like pork, maybe, or something. It's uh, colored here. Alright, so that's what it looks like here. Again, kind of. It looks like maybe like uh, lobster tails. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in previous dishes, we've had like similar looks going on. I'm thinking this is like our most dissimilar look. Yeah. I am also the most nervous about this. That kind of looks more like what you got going on over there, though. See the pile here? <laughs> I should put that there. You know, honestly, that, that might be the crazy part. All right. We're gonna get the rest of this cut up off camera and then we'll uh, present it to the present queen. It to the queen. <laughs> All right, see you guys in a second. Your Majesty, Majesty we, we present, present to you Gravlax. What did you say? Gravlax. Uh, cemetery salmon? Graveyard grouper? Uh, zombie fish? To the dungeon! Hi, it's Pester and Soso here from Laugh Now. We have just made grab legs, mm. and now we're gonna taste it. All right, and you do add your dill just before tasting. We forgot to mention that in our sauce portion of this, but that's what we did. Um, as you can see, my vegetarian version does not look like Pester's at all. Not necessarily thrilled with this, not my best work. If anybody has a great recipe for fake salmon, please post it in the comments. All right. But I am gonna taste it. I am see. equally as scared even though this is salmon. Like, uh, my like dragon tail concoction. Uh, dip it in. Dip it in. Dip it in. Dip it in. Now these are usually served with stewed potatoes or on an open taste sandwich. If you're stalling. I am. Mm. It's weirdly not as bad as it seems like it should be. It's exceptionally salty. It's just like super, super salty. Yeah. Um, this is how peasants preserved their food. So I'm guessing um, it's supposed to be this salty. What's wow. That is a, uh, a taste. That is a taste. Um, let me try it one more time without the sauce to see if, if the sauce is what's. Yeah. Yeah, I'll say. All right. I'm with you. Okay. You know my palate here a little bit. I think it's the, I think it's the salmon itself. Um, yeah. <laughs> right, for me, the salmon itself isn't as bad. Ah. Okay. Um, the sauce is too much for me. The tempeh has, uh, just has not, absorbed a lot. Just not my cup of tea. Not quite mine either. Must be an acquired taste. Yeah. I mean, if you like sushi and raw fish, it might be your cup of tea more, especially if you like dill. 
because that is a main ingredient here by yeah. far. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, but it's pretty salty, but overall I'm not salty about it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, yeah. you know, it's fun to make. Uh, again, if you know a, a recipe that has a funny name, you want to see us make it, tell us in the comments below. And if you made grab lax, uh, post the video in the comments below and we'll watch it. And at least you got these cool dragon tails. <laughs> and as always, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks! See ya. What's it look like? A dragon tail.